Okay, we have now looked at the introduction and we went from the introduction then to actually building a biblical framework for a healthy church. We had a number of elements, I think there were about eight elements that were involved in that. And so that now is all the data that you need to then do the next step in this process or this project, which is to create an assessment tool, okay? And so I'm gonna to try to just give you some examples of what that can look like. Uh, and that what I would encourage you again is to work with your cohort to think through how, what kind of an assessment tool that you can create. Though you come from different uh, churches, the elements are gonna be the same. And so you can talk together and work through what um, the assessment tool might look like. So again, uh, like I've been doing, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And we're going to begin to look at how we create an assessment tool. So when we're thinking about the idea of creating an assessment tool, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna draw from the biblical data and all the framework elements that we have done. So for example, the first thing we did is we looked at the word ecclesia, right? And it means that uh, in the Old Testament was the gathering, whether it's the gathering of Old Testament saints, those who follow Yahweh, but there's the gathering of secular people in a group. In the New Testament, the gathering then is what we call the church, and it's got a local uh, component to it where there's a defined area, okay? And so you want to ask, especially in this pandemic, in the time of the pandemic, are people physically getting together? Or if you have a virtual church, are they virtually meeting? And you have to ask yourself, does a virtual church actually meet the standards of ecclesia. And so you will have to answer that question. But your assessment tool begins to say, based on the word ecclesia and its meaning of gathering and coming together, is our church coming together? Pretty simple, right? That's part of your assessment tool. Uh, another example would be when you're looking at the metaphors. And one of the metaphors we said is that it, the church is the body of Christ, right? In 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 and 14, we see how that body operates in Ephesians chapter 4, in uh, 1 Peter 4, and in Romans 12. We see that, the, that the, the body of Christ is a metaphor for the church. And so you want to ask yourself, are the members seeing themselves a part of the body? Do the, each of the members understand what part of the body they are a part? I mean, what they are. I mean, are they a hand? Are they a foot? Are they a head? Are they a heart? And then they want to know, based on that, what is their gift? Who has God made them to be and why are they a part of this body? How do they then function and serve as a body member? How do they interact with other aspects and other parts of members of the body? And so that metaphor begins to help us uh, understand that. So you want to go through the metaphors and ask questions. And based on those metaphors, when you're trying to look at making an assessment tool for your church, when we look about the church as mission. Do people have a clear understanding that the church doesn't just do missions, but it is missions by its very nature that we're the body of Christ and Christ incarnated himself and showed us that he was missional, that he was mission, that he was on mission. And so we want to then ask, is our church, does you have a clarity in this area? And do they have a clear picture of what their mission is? If I were to ask the average person, can they articulate what is the mission of the church and what is their mission? within the church, okay? And so that again is part of your assessment tool. And so you may need to do um, a survey where you're actually trying to get and elicit information from a number of the body members to get the information you need to make a proper assessment. The next one is the area of church purity. And what we mean here both is, in this case, is it holy? Are people living holy lives? But also, does the church actually measure up to the standard of what a biblical church should look like. And that's what their framework is trying to show. And if it's not, then that takes us to the next one, church pure or the issue of church discipline. Does your church practice church discipline? That's a very simple assessment tool question, right? And so we're drawing from our previous um, work and we're trying to ask questions. If it does practice church discipline, how does it do it? Does it do it on the one-on-one -on -one level? Does it do it on, do we get others involved? Have you ever seen that process happen in your church? How has anybody ever been removed from the church because they've had a hard heart and treated like a Gentile. And so you want to ask yourself, are, is our church practicing church discipline? And your assessment tool should reflect that. The next thing it has to do with the, um, the ordinances. Do we practice baptism and communion? And do when we do those, do they actually reflect the gospel message? 
or is somehow the gospel message simply lost? And maybe they actually become more from the ordinances to sacraments where they're bestowing some kind of grace or even salvation. And if that's the case, then then we have some serious theological problems that you're going to need to uh, address. And then we move from there to we look at the leadership of the church. What is the structure of your leadership? Do you have elders? Do you have deacons? Is there a distinction between the elders and the deacons? Or do you use different terminology than elders and deacons? And if you do, why? But you need to make the assessment. Who are our leaders? Is it a singular leader? Is it a plural leader? And what, is the, what do the scriptures seem to indicate on that issue? And then you want to incorporate that into your assessment. And then finally, does our church practice um, discipleship? Is there any kind of a one-on-one -on -one discipleship? Is there any kind of a formal training process that you're moving people from where they don't know Christ to coming to know Christ to being built up in their faith and to be sent out? Is there any kind of a process? And so you want your assessment to be able to say, yes, we're engaged with the loss, and this is what it looks like. Are we, are we doing any kind of discipleship where we're helping people become learners? And again, one of the principles that you can think on this one is that you impress from afar, meaning that Wow, people look at you and you're speaking at the front. You're like, wow, that person's amazing. But you don't have much impact. The Spirit of God certainly can have impact. But you as a person don't because you don't know what the person's thinking. You don't know even if they're tuned into what you're saying. So you impress from afar, but you impact up close. And discipleship is, is all about impact. And that's why Jesus embedded himself with his disciples. And so you want to ask yourself in your assessment tool, what does discipleship look like? Is it present? And if so, what does it look like? And does that reflect what you see scripturally? It's not written here. Number nine would be the issue that we looked at in the last video, which has to do with program versus movement. Is your church a program-driven church or it is a movement-driven church? And you want to have some assessment questions that would reflect that. So that's how you can use the framework that you've been creating or the the, the uh, elements within the framework that you've created, you may actually want to put together a model, okay? And that then becomes the basis for your assessment tool. But when you're forming your assessment tool, you just need to think of it like, okay, I'm a doctor, right? When you walk into the doctor, they take your blood pressure, they take your temperature, they do your pulse, um, they do a number of things, they do some blood tests. And then what they're trying to say is, do you have the baseline of health? Are you healthy or are you not healthy? Your assessment tool at the end needs to be like you being a doctor and you may are able to make an assessment. Yes, our church is healthy or no, our church is not healthy or yes, it's healthy in this area, but it's not in this area, okay? And the questions then can begin to help you to uh, make that assessment. All right, so when you're thinking through your assessment tool, you need to ask really good questions. Okay, Einstein very clearly understands this issue is that he says, um, if you have to solve a problem and your life depended upon it, he'd use the first 55 minutes determining the proper questions to ask. And that's what we're after here. When you're an assessment tool, what are really valuable questions that will allow you to see are the elements in my biblical, my framework of a biblically healthy church present? And then um, can I make an assessment based on that? So ask good questions. The second thing is, it may be very helpful for you to formulate a model, right? And so if you look at this model, all of a sudden we see there's three elements. There's a leadership element, there's a spiritual health element, and there's an organizational health element. And so that, that may be one way you could do it. I wouldn't do that model maybe myself, but it's a way for you to look at and to make an assessment tool based on your model, much like we did when you think of character outcome number three, and when we were looking at the 3S leader, the shepherd steward um, uh, servant leader, and that we first, we did the biblical assessment or the biblical, we got all the biblical data, then we made uh, a training packet, and then we made an assessment tool to see how we and others are doing. So formulating a model can be very helpful. And I said earlier that you may wanna use a survey because the survey can help you get information from the body. If it's anonymous, then you can get individual pieces of information that you might need for your assessment. And so ask good questions, maybe formulate a model and use a survey when necessary to get information, you know, to ask people how many of you are actually involved in any kind of a discipleship relationship and define that for them. Or how many of you understand what your role is in this body? And do you see yourself as a member of this body? And so all of this can be captured in a survey. And so this helps us to understand, we go from our, our biblical framework, 
of what a healthy church is. We use that then to create an assessment tool using questions. And then we're gonna use that assessment tool to actually come and make a final assessment. And here are areas where our church is very healthy. Here's where they're moderately, and here's where maybe they need, uh, they have areas of unhealth. So this is how you move from the biblical framework to a, an assessment tool. And then in our next video, what we're gonna do is look at how do you engage with your leadership so that they're not caught by surprise. And that will do it for this video.